Welcome back guys. We're going to do some continuing education on these Bobcat Doosan engines, the uh, the common rail fuel systems as a matter of fact. Today we are going to look at fuel injectors. We're going to look at the actual common rail and we're going to look at injection pumps. We're going to tear into all this stuff and give you everything you need to know about these fuel systems because it, here's the deal is that there's a ton of these Delphi fuel systems out there and the, these engines are, are now out of warranty. And if you're part of any Bobcat group or forums or anything, you know, people who don't understand these engines, the first thing they're gonna tell you is, if you ask, is it a good engine? They're gonna tell, oh no, they're junk Bobcats going downhill, their engines are garbage. Man, this Doosan engine is an amazing engine, okay? You just don't have problems out of. If you have a problem out of the Doosan engine, I'm not saying, you know what I mean? It, it's usually caused by lack of maintenance, okay? Uh, contamination, you know, bad air filters, water in your fuel system. I think the weakest link of the Doosan engine is probably this Delphi fuel system. It's a great fuel system, don't get me wrong, but it is susceptible to contamination. So we're gonna start by actually taking a look at these injectors and we're gonna test some. I'm gonna give an example of some good injectors and what a bad injector looks like. So let's go over to the test bench. So when I test these injectors, I like to do it outside because when we're spraying and atomizing fuel, it really stinks. You don't want to be in an enclosed area. You know, you want to be out in the open so you're not really in breathing and inhaling this stuff. And it really stinks up the shop. So um, we are going to test these outside. I've got my stand set up out here on my wife's picnic table. She's going to, yeah. But anyway, so what I've got is I've got a nozzle tester. Now we can test both um, mechanical injectors and common rail injectors on this because really we're just using this to um, create pressure on the injector but in order to fire these uh, common rail injectors I've, I've got two different injectors here we've got the um, the Delphi and a Denso this Denso is used in the Kubota IT4 the 3300 engine and I've actually got a set of those that we're going to test today and um, of course the Delphi injectors that we're used to seeing in the uh, the later model Bobcat Doosan engines all in the D18 D24 and D34 engines all use this. They are solenoid based injectors. These are not piezoelectric. So in order to fire these solenoids, we have to have a, an injector tester like this that we can hook up and do uh, each different injectors. This one's capable of doing Bosch, Denso, and Delphi. Extremely handy setup here. If, if you're not sure if you got a bad injector, I highly recommend this kit. And if, and if you're interested in it, let me know and I can, I can hook you up with one of these. But the, the reason we're doing it this way, okay, because there is a ton of testing that we can do with software. And the majority of people do not have access to the software to do proper tests on these injectors. However, we can visually inspect these uh, with this type of system. And, and it's a huge help for those who need to or aren't sure if their injectors are bad and need to test them. So. Let's just start with the uh, the Delphi, the Doosan injectors, and I want to show you a couple examples of what a good injector looks like and a bad injector. So I've got my Denso injector on the test stand. I've got the electrical hooked up, but I'm not going to turn it on just yet. I've also got my injector leakage tube on here. We want to check back leak with this eighth inch tubing up here. So we can check several things. So first thing I want to do before I even turn on the power to the injector is I wanna make sure that the nozzle actually holds pressure. So let's start pumping this up. Okay, and can you see this nozzle spraying out? And I just started to, to pump it up. So there's no possible way this injector should be able to leak without firing the solenoid in there. It should be completely shut off. It should be shut off right here at the tip. But since it's leaking as I start to pump, that tells me that the pintle inside of there is stuck open, okay? And that's just allowing fuel to spray out. Now, I did a video where um, the, the engine was just billowing, just spraying white smoke everywhere. And that was the cause of this injector. It's stuck open, so it's just dumping raw fuel into that cylinder. You know, we think fuel is black smoke, or in this case, it was white smoke because there's so much unburned fuel going in there it was just clouding up and, and it was a mess so that's how that's one way to test for sure that this injector was bad and we can see that it is stuck open so there's one example of a bad injector 
So here's another uh, Delphi injector. We're going to do the same thing. I got my back leak tube on there. And we're going to start pumping this up and see if this thing's going to be able to maintain pressure. 2,000, yeah, 3,000 PSI. And I'm not leaking out of the nozzle. So that tells me at least we know the nozzle's holding. Now let's turn on the electrical. Woo, you see that thing fire? So you should be able to hear this solenoid firing right now. So that, that looks like a good injector. So right now it's working properly. We're also looking at the leak back here in our tube. So let me get this firing. Ooh, can you see that firing? That's at 2,000 PSI. One, two, three, four. And we're also seeing these tiny little ticks inside the back leak line. And that's exactly what I want to see is just these tiny little movements here. Um, and because that's, that's the fuel on top of the solenoid. When it fires, that, fuel, that, that little bit of fuel has to escape and it comes out this line here. Now, if we had an excessive amount of fuel pushing back every time it fired, we would know that fuel is escaping past the nozzle and getting into the back leak line. And, and that's also how we know that we've got a bad injector. But this injector is exactly what I want to see. This is a good injector. All right, so checking a third Denso injector. Uh, same thing, is I want to pump this up and make sure the nozzle's not leaking. Yep, reaching 4,000 PSI. And it's not leaking here, but I am pushing fuel through my back leak tube. And I don't want to see that. All right, let's start the power. Okay, very faint tick. I can't really hear much of anything coming from that injector, but you can hear that solenoid trying to fire. So pump it up. There's 5,000 PSI. 5,000 PSI, and it's not firing that injector. So that tells me that something's stuck closed inside this one. So that's a couple examples of bad injectors with the Denso. We had one with the nozzle stuck open, one with the nozzle stock closed stuck closed and then we've got an example of one that's actually working perfectly so let's take this off and let's change over to the denso injectors and see how the denzos do so now looking at a denso injector this is actually out of the kubota 3300 the it4 uh, kubota engine and you can see it's also solenoid based injector but we have to use the alligator clips up here on the prongs so we're gonna test this the same way. I want to, before I turn on the power, I wanna pump it up and make sure that that nozzle is not in leaking. Now we've got the, the leak back tube here. I don't have the adapter for the actual leak back. So it's just gonna kinda of drip down the side of the injector here, but that's okay. So that's 4,000 PSI and I'm not leaking out of the injector. So that's good news. Now I've got my injector tester changed over to the Denso pattern. And let's start that. Okay, and that's going to leak down. So you can hear that injector firing now. This one's a little bit louder than the Delphi. And we can also adjust the frequency. So we get that faster, but when I inject, when I test these, I like it to be as slow as possible so that we can actually see that spray pattern coming out of there. Okay, now let's see if we can pump this up and get a good spray out of the nozzle. Oh, yeah. So this one likes to fire around 4,000 PSI. And a very little bit of leakage out of the back leak on this one. So that tells me this is a good injector. So I'm on my fourth Denso injector. The other ones are testing good. Now let's take a look at this one. Um, so again, first thing I like to do is make sure the nozzle's not leaking. Pump it up. There's 5,000 PSI and we are not leaking out of the nozzle. So that tells me at least the pintle is closed. 
But let's go ahead and send power to it. Okay, so now we're firing the solenoid. 5,000. 5,500 PSI. And we are not spraying out of this one. So just like the, the Delphi injector, this one is, is stuck closed, which tells me that this injector is bad and it's going to need to be replaced. But the other three are good, so we know this engine has one bad injector. So let's take a little closer look at the Delphi injector. Now there's so many things we could talk about this, but I want to give you just the basics because I want you to be able to troubleshoot your own engine and at least know what you're looking at without going into too much depth with things we can do with software and, and such as that. But um, on top of these Delphi injectors, what you're going to see is a couple QR codes and a, and a 20 digit alphanumeric code. Now these are C3I coated injectors. So when you rebuild this injector, have a diesel shop do it or a reman or what they do is they put this on a test bench and they can test all the parameters, the firing, the way it fires, everything. And once they get all those parameters set, they put it in this long 20 digit code. And that's what we have to program into the ECU when we change out an injector because um, through minimum drive pulse, the, the ECU learns and continues to learn and, re and reprogram itself or adjust or calibrate itself to the wear, the life of the injector. You know, millions and millions of cycles through this thing. Uh, the springs start to wear, the nozzle starts to wear, and, and the, the ECU can make up for that. But it has to have somewhere to start, and that's where this code is. So if we put a brand new injector in, um, and our, our ECU has minimum drive pulse for this old injector, um, it's not gonna be firing correctly and yeah, the, okay, the engine will start and run. It should start and run. I've never had one not start and run after dropping an injector without coating it. However, yes, it should be coated as soon as possible because you're either going to be firing too soon, too late, too much fuel. You're not going to have optimum performance out of that engine, but it should run. So that's what these codes are up here for. That's how we program it into the ECU um, to give the parameters of the injector itself. Of course, our plug here, our back leak tube, we've talked about that. We've got other videos where we talk about the static test and how we check the amount of fuel coming out of this. We've got an O-ring here. This O-ring is only to keep engine oil out of the combustion chamber. Um, I don't have a well, washer, but there's a copper fire ring or, or washer that goes down here. One-time use. If you replace an injector, uh, replace your copper washer. Now I'm just going to pull this end off and we can kind of see what's going on in here. When I was telling you that uh, pentel or the nozzle was getting stuck either open or closed, what we can do is we can remove this lower half of the injector. And what we'll see here, there's a spring on this side of the injector. There's nothing we can do on this side, you know, except not lose your spring if you take, if you open one of these up. We got our solenoid part. And then we've got our actual tip, our nozzle. There's another spring that goes on top of the pintle. Okay. So this spring goes on top of this little tip right here. Can you see this helical cut right here? This is where high pressure fuel comes down to the bottom part of this. Now high pressure fuel is down here, even before it fires, the high pressure fuel is actually what pushes this nozzle up. But there's also high pressure fuel on top of this holding it closed plus spring pressure. So when this little solenoid is energized, it lets that little bit of fuel on top of this escape. And when that fuel escapes, the high pressure fuel pushes this up and sprays uh, the diesel fuel out of the nozzle assembly here. Now again, this nozzle, or the pentel goes into the nozzle, and we're talking tolerances on a microscopic level. So if this is scarred, scratched, or worn, fuel can come from this side past the top, and it can go out of our leak pipe here. So when we're doing our static test, and we have a ton of fuel spraying or coming out of the leak back tube, or the return line, then we know that 
you know, we've got wear in here, some damage, and, and that's why we, we have a bad injector. It's not allowing um, the injector to maintain pressure. So we know that it's going to have to be replaced. When I say microscopic, like micrometers, you know, tolerance in there, so the fuel is actually the seal, is what seals fuel from on the bottom from escaping the top. The actual fuel itself is the seal. In the very end of the nozzle here, you could see that spray pattern shooting out like a star shape. There's seven holes, microscopic holes. I say microscopic, I can't see them. On a new injector, I can't see them. Maybe your eyes are better than mine and you would be able to see those. But those holes are so tiny, and that's why it's important that we have good, clean, quality fuel because just a small amount of contamination can get in there and clog up one of those holes. As a matter of fact, I'll show you a picture right here. This is under magnification with a light coming in from the back side like, um, like a fiber optic tube, and you can actually see the seven um, holes here with the light coming through them in this picture. But again, this is magnified, so you still can't see that with the naked eye. Um, so that's basically you know what we're talking about. This is the piece that slides inside there that was either stuck open, allowing our fuel just to spray out, or stuck closed, not allowing fuel to spray out at all. So we kind of just put all this back together. So that's really all you have to know about this injector. I just want you to see how the inside worked, the nozzle and the pentel and everything worked, and that way you can kind of get an idea of, of what's getting stuck or getting clogged up. So, all right, so on the next video, we are actually gonna tear into the pumps. We've got a uh, pump off of a D24. This is a high pressure pump off the D24. We've got one off the D34, and we're gonna talk about common rails. But as of right now, we're just gonna stick with the injectors. And if you have any questions, please let me know. If you're interested in any of those test tools that I have used, uh, let me know as well, and I'll make sure to, um, to hook you up with the set if you are interested. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps.